Welcome, everyone, to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, we have talked about the heart valves before. As you recall, there are four of them. And just like the valves and the plumbing in your house, they open to allow blood to flow forward, and they close to prevent blood from flowing backward. Now, the valve between the two chambers on the left side of your heart, that is the left atrium, the left ventricle, that is called the mitral valve. Now, there are two things that can go wrong with the mitral valve. The opening is too narrow, and that restricts the flow of blood to the rest of the body. Or it doesn't close the way it should, and blood leaks. The blood flows backwards. And here to tell us about repairing the mitral valve with the help of a robot is Mayo Clinic cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. Rocky Daly. Welcome back to the program, Dr. Daly. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, so good to see you. So uh, the buzzword uh, for any kind of surgical procedure is minimally invasive. So tell us Mm -hmm. about the techniques that are minimally invasive in the field of heart surgery. So when we're talking about that, we're talking about different incisions. We're not talking about doing different surgery on the heart. We do the same surgery on the heart. We just use different incisions, and they're smaller incisions in a different location. And we think that that helps with uh, time to recovery. It does seem to help patients recover and get stamina back sooner. So you can do those minimally invasive surgeries with or without the robot, right? Well, that's true. We can. I think the robot helps us in a lot of ways, uh, uh, and, and makes it a little bit easier, actually. And tell us how that system works. So the robot really moves the surgeon's hands inside the chest. And we can put the hands or the arms of the robot in through little incisions. And then they, they work just exactly what the surgeon wants them to do uh, while the surgeon working on, on the robot sits at a console that's remote from the patient. Uh, so you're not even at the operating table? One surgeon is at the operating table. Okay. You should understand because we do want somebody right there that's working on the patient. And they do their work through a little incision that's about an inch long uh, or as little as an inch long. And then the other surgeon sits at the robot console and controls the arms or the hands of the robot to work inside the chest. Um, so that at the console, the surgeon moves their hands and, and the movements are replicated exactly inside the robot. The robot doesn't decide what to do or do things automatically. The surgeon is actually moving things. You said that for the patient, a minimally invasive robot-assisted surgery, uh, they can recover more quickly because they're not being opened up so much. Is it easier for you as the surgeon or is it harder? It was harder for me at first because I had to learn these minimally invasive techniques. Um, Current surgeons finishing training today are much more adept at the minimally invasive techniques. And, uh, but once I was doing enough of these, now I feel comfortable both ways. Both ways are equally uh, easy for me. How did you, how did you practice? I mean, do you have a, like a simulator or yeah, you go? You do. You yeah. have a simulator. And, uh, and initially we would practice as a team. So both surgeons would go and practice one working at the bedside of the simulator and the other working in the console. So we would get to be a team and then we'd switch and we'd, so we could uh, fill in either way. And uh, it takes a, a lot of teamwork to be efficient with this and not to waste time. What's on the console? What does that look like? I mean, you're controlling the robotic arms at the console. So it's, it's got two, uh, uh, I guess, arms that the surgeon inserts fingers into. And then as the surgeon moves their hands and their fingers, those movements are very exactly replicated by the robot. The only thing we can't do is we can't get a sense of touch or feel like how hard are we grasping something. So we need vision to be able to do that. And the robot provides good three-dimensional vision, it's, which gives us uh, all we need. And I assume the patient is asleep when you put the robotic arms in? Yeah, they're asleep. <laughs> okay, and then are they then on the heart, are they on a bypass? So they're on the heart lung machine? Right, so the surgery on the heart is exactly what we would do with an open surgery. Uh, it's on a heart lung machine. We have to stop the heart, open the heart, and work then directly on the valve. We can see the valve much better with a robotic approach because the hands of the robot are then inside the heart, really, and the, the camera goes almost inside the heart, and the view is perfect. 
And how do you get the heart to stop and how do you get it restarted? So we do that the same way we do with the open technique. Um, we stop it with a solution called cardioplegia that uh, stops the contractility of the heart. And then once we give the heart normal blood, it just beats. Hearts like to beat. <laughs> it just goes back to its old job. Yep. Um, it's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about the mitral valve. Is that the one that uh, there is most often a problem with? And, and what can you fix? Well, most often we see problems with the left-sided heart valves, either the valve leading in, which is the mitral, or the valve leading out, which is the aortic valve. And we can, of those two valves, the mitral tends to be easiest to apply repair techniques. We don't have to replace it for certain types of lesions. We can repair it. And uh, how do you figure out what's wrong in the first place? How do you know what you have to fix? Well, echo is usually the most reliable way of seeing it. And, and, and that's an ultrasound? That's an ultrasound that's done from outside. And yes. it shows you the function of the heart and, and what may be wrong and how the blood is flowing? And even the structure of the valves now, we can see very with high resolution with echo. It's pretty amazing. And what's the most common problem you see with the mitral valve? Leaking. It's a, that's called regurgitation? It, so it, Right. In the United States, the biggest problem is leaking of the valve, which is called insufficiency or regurgitation. And you can fix that with the robot? 90% of the time we can fix it. And if you can't fix it, do you have to replace the valve? And can you do that robotically? Yes and yes. We, can, we would have to replace it, and we can do that robotically. And then if you have to replace it, what do, what do you use? A mechanical valve, or do you use it? Yeah, there's two types of valves, either mechanical valves or tissue valves. The mechanical valves <laughs> will last forever, uh, but they require a blood thinner. And the tissue valves uh, don't require the blood thinner, but they might wear out. And what's the recovery like uh, of this sur minimally invasive surgery versus when you have to crack the chest, open the chest? So it's still a surgery. It's not like a catheter-based procedure, and the patients do need time to recover. Um, after a, a full sternotomy, it probably takes six to eight weeks to really get their stamina back and feel good again. And Sternotomy meaning you have split the chest. Right. The breastbone to get in. E exactly. And with uh, the minimally invasive technique, it's more in the neighborhood of four weeks. Everybody's different, of course, and some people need more and less with both approaches, but it's just a little bit sooner. I think getting the stamina back is the most frustrating thing to young people recovering from surgery. And are there any complications that come with using the robotic-assisted surgery versus traditional? Uh, it would mostly be the same types of risks. There is some risk of infection with surgery uh, or uh, other complications that might occur that really aren't much different from the open technique. Um, probably the only big difference there is uh, the way we cannulate for bypass for the heart-lung machine. And we do that in the femoral vessels, so we have to be careful about those with the, with the robotic technique. Let's say you have decided that you need to replace the valve and you're going to use a mechanical valve. I assume that's about the size of a, what, a grape? Walnut grape? It's, it, uh, it's about the size of a, a half dollar. Okay, yeah. so how do you get it in there? Um, well, actually, it's interesting because getting the valve through the incision is sometimes challenging when we have to replace it. The incision <laughs> has to be big enough to squish the valve through. Right. Uh, sewing it, we have the arms in, and we, it, the sewing is fine. But the, And then how do you get it into the heart? Uh, we have an incision in the heart that we're working in through. In the muscle? Yes, yes, the upper chamber, the atrium. All right, and you've done how many of these? Uh, over 900 now. <laughs> and you've got a couple of guys that you're training to take over, should you ever decide to, to give this up. <laughs> yep, they're, and they're gr very good. They're great. It'll All take right. two of them to replace you. Is that what you're telling us? Oh, I no, no. That's... I'm learning from them, <laughs> let yeah. me tell you. <laughs> All right, robotic-assisted heart surgery. The surgeon sits at a console looking at the heart on a video monitor, and I think you have a magnified 3D view of the whole thing, don't you? Yes. All right, and you performed the procedure with robotic arms, and since, what is it, 2008, you've done... Over 900 procedures. You're going to hit 1,000 this year? This year we will, for sure. All we're, right. Our, we're busy. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic cardiovascular surgeon, Dr. Rocky Daly. Thanks, Dr. Daly. Thanks for having me.